thing. I know this is looking a little better. Uh, track automatically track forward and see what happens. You can see it's going a lot quicker than but if we press it one at a time, but it could also be a bit in less accurate. It's looking okay, it's dipping a little bit. Alright, let's see what happened there. Alt 2 to see mm, the nose is pretty good. Scare wire frame. Yep, that's actually pretty much spot on. Now we'll turn this back on. Wire frame. And yep, that's looking pretty good. I think we can we can dust that one off. Okay. The start frame here is actually it's a bit concerned about the chin. It's too small. I might try and scale it up just a little bit. Gee, it's hard to scale. <laughs> okay, and I might move it back a little bit on the Z. Alright, I'll go back to frame 20 and track backwards to my keyframe. Yeah, we're getting uh, quite a bit of a difference between frame one and frame two because it's uh, it's not because uh, yeah the two keyframes aren't aligning correctly, so I might actually have to delete keyframe there and uh, just track backwards over it. Okay, that's the very end there. Alrighty, I think that's pretty good. Now to export it, we can just go camera export, camera object exports, and set new. And I'll save it as the camera data. And because even though we're geometry tracking, when we save it in Maya, the geometry will be still, and it will be the camera that's actually animated, which is handy for us. So it's uh, well, that's why I'm saving as camera data instead of you know, uh, geometry data. And we do want to export the tracking geometry with that and all features. Okay, hit save and good. I've opened the scene back up in Maya and uh, here's the uh, the mesh that it's, well here's our tracking geometry mesh and there's the image plane and the camera and as we pan through the timeline we see that the face is sitting still and the camera is uh, is moving around it. So that's really handy for us because uh, you might notice that this isn't the nicest looking piece of geometry here. It's quite a uh, disgusting fact and it's because of the uh, multiple OBJ exports. So what we should do is uh, import our face back in here. And this is the original model here. And you can see how it's been distorted. And we can press 3 for smooth mode. And what I want to do is uh, Position this new face to be where uh, this this face is now. So I'll rotate this around, and I want to try and match it up as best I can. They should match quite well because they are the same thing. Okay. When you have this ghosting effect you can tell that they're both lined up pretty well. 
So that looks pretty good. Uh, it looks as if that mesh is slightly larger. I might want to scale this one up just like that. Okay, now let's hide that. Go into the camera. You can see our face overlaid. And that looks pretty good. Now let's uh, let's UV map this base. So I'll go create UVs. Hmm, which one do we want to do? I might actually try spherical mapping. If we go to the UV texture editor. Hmm, that's given us both. It's nicely laid out, but it's given us both. Uh, as you can see, it's split it, so I might go create UVs. Let's try planar mapping. Okay, it's uh, it's it's a bit wonky. We can rotate it a little bit, and I'll just try and match this uh, middle line here with the middle of the grid. Okay, that looks pretty good, and I'll export this polygons UV snapshot. And I'll set this to out UV 2048. Okay, cool. All right, now let us uh, create the uh, ink blot effect in After Effects. In After Effects, I have this uh, solid layer which I've applied a fractal noise to, and this is actually the final uh, ink blot that we're going to be using here. And it doesn't look like that much, but uh, basically. Uh, the, the settings that I've used is subscale. You can also use basic, but I like subscale because it gives a uh, some parts are in focus, some parts are out of focus, which I like. Um, pretending that it has uh, a lot of depth of field, and uh, it's set to soft linear. And the important thing is it's set to soft clamp. If we allow high dynamic range results with uh, this much contrast, the black will just clip in an eight bits channel, so uh, we don't want that. And so that's why I've said to soft clamp. And the reason the uh, the contrast is so high is uh, if it was to say 2000, it's uh, it's a very grey type uh, look. We want because it's uh, it's supposed to be Rorschach's ink blot. We want solid black and we want white. And that's why I've set the uh, the contrast to about 4800. So this is the uh, the input and this everything that's white we're going to be using a blending mode multiply to make it transparent and that's why we want a massive amount of contrast between the two colors and also I've set the complexity to absolute maximum which makes it slow to render but it looks a lot better and uh, I've also animated the evolution so as you can see it has this really nice animation to it that we get for pretty much free just by animating the evolution. It looks really cool. Okay, and also because Rorschach has a, uh, it's it's his ink bots are mirrored. All we can do is add a mirror effect, split it right down the middle, and whatever happens on one side happens on the other side. So now we have this cool effect. Now the problem with fractal noise is it's completely random. And so it took me quite a while to find this pattern that I like. Um, but uh, it generates it, uh, I think it's pseudo randomly. And you can pretty much, with the, uh, with the, with the transform, you can pretty much, uh, where is it, offset the turbulence to infinity. You can just keep going and it'll have all these, just keep generating new and new patterns. So you pretty much infinite choice but it's de it's definitely hard to find one that actually looks good and uh, even this one here you'll see that we have all these things that we we don't want either this will be off the face or there's too many too many un uh, unique ink blots here Rorschach only has a few distinct ones normally so I don't really want all this random stuff on the side and to get rid of that I've created a mask and it's currently set to none. I'll set it to add, and I had to animate it to uh, get rid of all the all the unwanted 
parts that uh, all the unwanted things block. So I'll set it back to none and I'll turn the mask on. So as you can see, I only have to uh, draw it on one side and then the mirror has mirrored it to the other side. And it's pretty much excluding things like uh, this, these bits of ink here and there. All of this. I just want to keep a nice simple pattern. I don't want any of that. So I've animated that to uh, to get rid of the unwanted stuff.